It was one of the great hopes against the coronavirus. The vaccine from the German pharmaceutical company CureVac was expected to be among the first to hit the market. In June came the bitter disappointment. Europe's regulator did not approve the vaccine after clinical studies showed it was less than 50% effective. This also came as a big disappointment for the German government, which last year bought a stake in the company worth around 300 million euros. Welcome to your COVID-19 special. I'm Chris Kober in Berlin. High expectations, low results. CureVac's COVID-19 jab did not turn out what many had hoped it would be. That's despite using the same messenger RNA technology as rivals Moderna and BioNTech Pfizer. CureVac aimed to produce its vaccine primarily for developing countries, as it can be stored more easily than other products. And despite disappointing trial results, the company is sticking to the plan. Efren Hernandez has got used to taking his temperature and recording the results in an app. Based in Mexico City, he's been part of German company CureVac's COVID-19 vaccine trial since January. The fact that the German government, Bill Gates and Tesla all supported CureVac convinced me that it was a safe bet. But disappointing news was to come in June, when it emerged that CureVac's jab had an efficacy rate of only 48%. The reality is more complicated. To me, CureVac's 48% effectiveness doesn't seem bad compared to other vaccines like Pfizer's, which in the end have a real-life effectiveness of between 49 and 64 percent. CureVac's study took place when all the new variants were circulating. Hernandez is one of more than 30,000 people in Latin America who signed up to take part in the CureVac trial. Uncertainty among test subjects is rife. Many aren't sure whether or not they have protection. The vaccination drive overall in Mexico has got off to a sluggish start. According to the World Health Organization, less than a fifth of the country's population has been fully vaccinated. One major factor is cost. CureVac says it is able to produce its vaccine more cheaply than BioNTech Pfizer. And CureVac's jab has also been shown to offer protection against serious illness. I think it will be a tool in the fight against COVID-19 in Latin American countries. In patients aged 18 to 60 in Mexico, the efficacy for avoiding severe illness, as well as hospitalization, intensive care and death, was higher than 80 percent. When it comes to variants, the vaccine performs better against alpha and delta. But CureVac's jab has still not been given the green light. Authorities in Mexico City say the company has not yet applied for approval there. At the company's headquarters in the German city of Tübingen, managers are hoping to get approval from the European Medicines Agency. But no one was prepared to offer any details about the process. Meanwhile, the German government has ruled out stepping in. I don't see any need to assess this ourselves, because I think we're in good hands with the European Medicines Agency. Also, no matter what vaccines we have, we have committed to give the extra to African and Latin American countries. And for the moment, we've put that number at 30 million jabs, but it could be more. In the meantime, Efren Hernandez will continue to pass on his temperature readings to the researchers. To this day, he doesn't know whether he's received the vaccine or a placebo. The head of CureVac said the low efficacy was a result of delayed start of testing when many more variants were circulating than during competitors' trials. 
I asked Peter Kremsner, director of the Institute for Tropical Medicine at Tübingen University Hospital and head of the CureVac trial here in Germany, if he agreed. This may be one explanation, but certainly for me, not the most important one. For me, it is rather the dose. We were stuck to a maximum of 12 microgram, which came out in the phase one trial when we judged the safety and tolerability and immunogenicity of the vaccine. And we were not able to dose higher than 12 microgram per shot because of yeah, too much of intolerability uh, above that. So for me, it was the dose. And the competitors could dose three to 10 times higher. And for me, this is the main explanation. Does that have to do uh, with something that the uh, Financial Times reported, uh, which would be uh, that CureVac was reluctant to work with modified messenger RNA because it would have to buy the patents for it, unlike BioNTech and Moderna, which did just that? Well, that is a likely explanation, uh, and that is the main difference. Otherwise, the sequence of the S antigen is the same. But the difference is that Moderna and BioNTech have modified the uracil to pseudouridine, and that makes a difference, obviously, in tolerability. And then one can dose higher and get better immunogenicity and thereby, obviously, better efficacy. Hmm. Uh, the CureVac vaccine can be stored at higher temperatures, which makes countries in warmer regions of the world a suitable market. Those often are poorer countries, too. Now, is it justifiable sending a vaccine to these countries that works less well than others? Well, that may be something which is interesting, and certainly others are also working on this, as well as CureVac. To the best of my knowledge, and until very recently, we have stored, and we were urged to store the vaccine of CureVac at minus 80 degrees Celsius. And only for the day of vaccination, we were allowed to thaw it and uh, store it in the fridge uh, between two and eight degrees Celsius for a few hours and then discard the rest after that. Hmm. So these things are possible. And I guess the mRNA vaccines from the data I know, are all storable at even high temperatures, even room temperatures, even tropical temperatures. But these uh, stability tests have to be performed, and the regulators need to agree that this is a possibility. Until now, I am not aware of anything like this for CureVac or for other companies. Should the current vaccine be approved, could it be used as a booster shot for a possible third inoculation, for example, here in Europe? That is certainly a possibility for all those vaccines which are under development, under clinical development and didn't get yet an approval. One needs to consider whether a booster vaccination is the best approach because most of the other yeah, people, at least in Europe, are now already vaccinated at least once. And the booster will come up at some time. And this is something uh, where we are looking into that. Every, everybody is looking into that. Yeah. All right, Peter Kremsner. He is uh, the director of the Institute for Tropical Medicine in Tübingen and head of the German CureVac trial. Thanks for being on the program, Peter. Thank you. Staying on the topic of vaccines, here is DW's science correspondent, Derek Williams. Are the current vaccines causing selective variants to surge? This is another of those internet rumors that's gained some traction in the last few weeks because somehow it sounds like it might be kind of plausible, but it actually isn't. And to explain why, I have to go over some of the basics again. Um, all viruses evolve randomly over time as they replicate, and a minuscule number of those mutations will prove 
advantageous. Let's say that one of them makes a mutant a, a lot more transmissible in humans. Voila, a, a potentially dangerous new variant. Um, over time, that variant's offspring could start to supplant earlier versions of the virus simply because the variant spreads to more unprotected people in a population within a shorter period of time because it's more transmissible. Um, so when you start to look for that variant specifically in that population, you see increasing numbers of people getting it, a surge. But that's an effect that can be traced back to the variant's ability to spread faster in people with no immunity, not something that's caused by or, or driven by vaccines. What vaccines do is turn unprotected people into protected people with immune systems that are quickly able to shut down any subsequent infections with SARS-CoV-2, whether that infection would have been with a fast spreading variant or, or a slower spreading one. In other words, they keep us from turning into virus factories where the pathogen can replicate a lot. And, and the less the virus replicates, the fewer chances it has to mutate. So in the long run, vaccines will actually help prevent other potentially dangerous new variants from arising by slowing and stopping the spread of SARS-CoV-2 and drastically reducing the number of times that it's able to make copies of itself.